body. This is another bridge coming up very soon. This is how the road goes up. People get priority, and the community street goes up to the edge of the water body. This will be the edge very soon. This is what we call it, the edge of the city should have been all around Dhaka. This is, a, this is not just a dream. This is a dream which we believe in 2013 we can fulfill. And we can again claim, and again, all together can say that this is our city, and we love our city, and we know our potentialities. And someday, the political leaders will understand the people of this city has duly underscored the need to turn around and make those possibilities into reality. By saying this, I convey this message to our beloved guest. We are all striving towards that direction. The Department of Architecture, Department of Pharmacy, with a lot of other presentation you will see in the next session, that we are trying to get our students educated, not to flat and go to some other country, but to learn, to empower themselves, to make them understand the beautiful country they have, and put forward everything they can do to turn around and make the most beautiful country in the world. We don't want to be on the bottom of the whole world, the most unlivable city. We want to be the most lovely, most livable, and definitely most potential city in the world. I promise that to you, that by looking at these students, you can feel in, this eyes, in their eyes, it is a matter of time to reach that goal. By saying so, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and time. I am opening the question and answer session to the presenters. Uh, any of the audience, uh, anyone can ask question. We have two volunteers on two ends. Uh, you can ask for the microphone and ask question to the presenta presenters. It is not specific, but it is confined to any sector, any area, any person. This is for 16 million people for the country. Everyone, if everybody is not aware of the environment, I think this country is not sustainable. So, I like to congratulate Mr. Iqbal Hadi on behalf of the university, on behalf of the students, teachers, officers of the university. That is wonderful Thank you very much. You reach that goal. I believe so. I believe all of you are with me. I believe so. Thank you. It's called Chemist Your Water. You see, the most of the water bodies and the rivers and the canals are polluted in extreme level. Almost about the students and teachers can start thinking how this pollution can be mitigated. They will refer to the important part was to stop polluting, which I think we have to participate in the movement, forcing the government to do that, to ask polluters to pay and stop polluting the river. Second of all, what damage we have done, we have to start thinking how in chemically or in organic way we can restore those deteriorated polluted water bodies and come back again with those beautiful, normal, joyous water, the water body. The water which is look like the eyes of the coast, you have to bring back that water body. And there is where you have huge immense responsibility. But before that, you have to prepare yourself. You can learn, understand your soil, your water, and what is happening and how we can stop it. And also, by not having partnership with these kind of people, we can also learn what they have done all over the world. And definitely, that is empowering our side. That is how we can bow down and force everybody to listen up and to take care of our things. Thank you. I'm happy to tell you something about Chemists Without Borders, which is a very new organization. We take our model from Mason Saint-Pierre, or Doctors Without Borders, 
which is a group that seeks to provide medical care where it's needed at the request of those who need it. Chemists Without Borders, uh, at Chemists Without Borders, we believe that those of us who have had the advantages of ex lots of education, lots of formal education, that doesn't make us smarter than anybody else. We may know more, but that information is transferable. And if you want some information that you think we have, we're happy to share what we know with you so that you can fix the problems that you perceive in your own environment or whatever other chemical question there may be to your satisfaction in a way that meets the needs of your nation. And that's what we are trying to do. Uh, Ms. Cochran and I are both here because at the request of the Board of Trustees to help Bangladesh University think about the environmental, environmental science programs and research that they wish to undertake. So we will respond to your questions and your needs as best we can. Uh, I think I can speak for uh, Ms. Cochran as well. Yesterday we had the great pleasure of working with students at the Department of Pharmacy showing them some of the lab exercises that we think are important that may change how chemistry is perceived around the world. The energy and the enthusiasm and the knowledge that you have here are going to be key to making the changes that you want. I'm really pleased to see that not only do you know what the bad news is, but you get information about what the good news is as well. Because it's the good news that fills your heart and keeps you moving forward to conquer the things that are not the way you want it in your country. Thank you. Problem, it is one of the burning issues nowadays. As this is a very relevant and burning issue, an investigation was done both by Department of Architecture and Department of Pharmacy. Now, I call lecturer Sifat Sultana, lecturer Fawzi Rahman, and guest faculty Wasif Sar Shah Hussein of Department of Architecture to present their findings on Hajribagh. This industry was moved to the fringe of then Dhaka city, Hajaribag. And with this, the tanneries industry started to grow. And with this growth, the whole area grew up with the development of the tanneries industry. This growth was spontaneous without any government guideline or regulation. Now that the industry has grown up, the contribution to the economy has also become sizable. Because of that, the government and the beneficiaries of this industry had turned a blind eye towards the environmental impact of the tanneries industry. 
Dhaka, which was once the provincial capital of the Mughal rule, with time that small city with a small population has grown up to be the capital city of a nation with 160 million people. It need not to be mentioned that with that growth, the capital city of Dhaka has also grown in population beyond anybody's wildest imagination. Now we can no longer ignore the effect of Tanneri's industry, which sits on the fringe of the whole city. Now different vested interest groups are also trying to come up with different solutions. There has been a proposal from the government of Bangladesh to move the whole Tanneri's industry to another to another fringe area of Dhaka city Savar. But this suggestion has also not sit well with the people of Savar. They want no part of these industries. They want no part of these industries to be moved there. And any mention of this in tennis industry has also caused a huge uproar among the people of Savar. Hajaribag issue has now become a two-edged sword for all of us. On one hand, we cannot ignore the huge economical impact it has on a poor third world country. On the other hand, the environmental issues can no longer be ignored. On the light of this situation, the students of Studio 7, 8, and 9 has conducted the survey under the guidance of the faculty members, Ms. Sifat Sultana, Ms. Raihana Parvin, and Ms. Fawzia Rahman Mori. So now, on behalf of their students, the faculty members Sifat Sultana and Fawzia Rahman Mori are going to present the study for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Vasif Hussain. We are presenting socio-economic condition in the context of physical living of Hazaribagh. Fourth, about 6% of total about earning. In the early 20s, this industry started its walking in Hazaribagh. Uh, according to the Ministry of Industry, there are only 30 tanneries owned by West Pakistani businessmen in Hazaribagh during 1965. Right now, there are about 570 tanneries in the whole Bangladesh. Now here I will show the location. Here is the Dhaka, dis uh, Dhaka district and then uh, Dhaka city locating uh, in the Dhaka city map, we are locating Hajaribagh Thana. The total area of Hajaribagh Thana is 3.5 acre square meter. Here is the Google image of Hajaribagh Thana. We are locating the total Thana here. And here is the Hajaribagh Tanner area and the Hajaribagh residential area. We find that uh, in the uh, north of Hajaribagh, there is Mohammedpur area, and uh, the south side, there is uh, Rayar Bajar, and Buri, uh, uh, on the west, there is Rayar Bajar and Buri Ganga. There is uh, Kamrangi Chor in the south side, and in the east, there is uh, Dhanmundi and Pilkhana. We have found the road network here. Uh, the, there is the main arterial road. This is the embankment for the Hajaribagh area. And uh, these red marks are the primary road, and blues are the secondary, and uh, these uh, greens are the tertiary road between the Hajaribagh tannery area and the Hajaribagh residential area. This is the embankment. And here is a uh, view of this embankment road. This is Shat Murjid Road, that is a very important road in the context of Dhaka city. And here we find a view of Shat Murjid Road. And these are the internal, uh, some internal major road of, uh, uh, to uh, enter the Hajaribagh uh, tannery area. And this is an internal road that is uh, named Gaj Mahal Road. Now there is the zoning. Uh, we have, um, Find the total area. Mm -hmm. 
The zoning is considered according to the land use pattern. We have found different type of uh, land use pattern here. There's the residential area, the tannery area. There are also some slums, uh, some agro-based area, and some educational buildings. And also there are some mixed-use buildings. Now we will uh, show a volumetric study of this area. There are uh, from single-story building uh, to uh, above seven-fifth-story building we found there. Um, these are the single story building of Hajari Bag area. These buildings are from two to two to third story. This contains four to five story. These are the six to seven story building and these buildings are above seven story. Hajari Bag was first located in Dhaka city. Then there are only three to four tanneries in Hajari Bag area surrounded by dense forest and paddy land. In 1947, after the partition between India and Pakistan, Hajari Bagh area was se uh, selected as a tannery area by the government. From that time, tannery industry was gradually developed by centralizing Dhaka tannery. In 1916, the diagram shows the primary condition of Hajari Bagh area. What, we, I, what I have said, there was three to four tanneries in Hajari Bagh area. Those are, the, uh, uh, those are the situations we assumed. In my job, the other 50% is going around and trying to find money to figure out how to do that. Um, so, the point of the story being, um, Everything you become interested in, don't ignore it. Listen to what the universe is telling you. You'll hear things from people that are inspiring and go after it. Run along that path and see where it takes you because um, whenever I get to do something very exciting and fun like be here in Bangladesh, I realize that every time I've forked off the road, it's brought me to a new place. and. Here I am today at your university, and um, that all those decisions have brought me here, and how lucky am I to be here with you. The piece of advice I would give you is to create yourself a mission statement. I think every human on the planet needs a mission statement, and something I did quite a number of years ago was to write myself a mission statement, and it's just scribbled still on the same piece of paper from about seven years ago and it's stuck above my computer at my desk. And it reminds me those days when um, the washing machine stopped working and um, I got in a traffic jam on my way to work and my hair doesn't look the way I wanted it to look today. I'm having a bad hair day and all these things happen that take you off the mission of your life and distract you from what's really, really important. So write yourself a mission statement. My mission statement goes like this. I will use my knowledge and skills in the betterment of human health and the environment. And so every time I get confused about what I'm doing or my lunch doesn't taste good or I'm tired today or whatever the thing is that takes me off my path, I look at my mission statement and I remember what I'm supposed to be doing. It puts me back on the path. So that's my advice to you. Um, one last statement was that when I was invited to come to Bangladesh by the university and um, through Chemists Without Borders, I thought, wow, this is great. I am um, going to teach the people in Bangladesh so much stuff and I'm going to help them so much. And it's really struck me in the last two days that actually what's happening is that I am being taught a lot of stuff and that you are helping me so much. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion about what resources Bangladesh needs in order to be successful in the future, in order to be more sustainable in the future, and it strikes me that you've got the resources that you need, and it's yourselves. You have a very, very powerful people resource, very, very intelligent students, very uh, motivated students, and I'm excited 
um, in the rest of my career to see where that takes you. I think it'll be phenomenal. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Now welcome our chief guest, Professor Dr. Louise K. Only to deliver her speech. Uh, from designing, looking at the design of homes in a variety of environments here in Bangladesh, uh, to doing urban renewal projects in a city that most people would say, oh my gosh, there's no way we can do that, to students who ask questions, um, you should keep doing that. What an education should give you, in addition to knowledge, is an ability to question the assumptions of the knowledge that's presented to you. That's really important. When I was speaking with the students um, yesterday, while Rachel was in the lab, I was with students and vice versa, I was really impressed with how careful and thoughtful you each were. There were some of you, though, who had yet to find your voice. You were quiet and polite and listening. Find your voice, find what's important to you, and tell people about it. Ask the questions and challenge authority. Now, the administration doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> but if you don't ask questions of the people who are currently, theoretically, above you in one way or another, if you don't challenge the assumptions that they have made in their knowledge construction, then you will not change your world. And you have the energy and the passion to do that. So those of you who were quiet, and I have to tell you it was mostly the young ladies who were fairly quiet, um, find your voice. Gentlemen, ensure that your compatriots, whether they're female or male, have an opportunity to help uh, with their voice and with their perceptions of what problems and solutions might be. I have no doubt that with the um, education and the drive that, and the energy that you have all presented that I've seen today and the diverse intellectual interests that you have, that you will be successful in what you do, that you will be able to take knowledge from wherever and adapt it to your use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Now, I request our chairperson, Professor Dr. Gola Mali Foki, to provide her his speech. Chief Guest, Dr. Onslem, Special Guest, <coughs> Mrs. Russell Pokrand, a Special Guest, Mr. Selim, uh, head of the Department of Architecture and Pharmacy. Our respected teachers, my colleagues, the Registrar and Controller of Examinations, and my dear students, Assalamu Alaikum. Today, we are having the seminar on sustainability in built environment and development. In fact, we have the management of this university has undertaken a, a quite dynamic and important program on environmental issues. A few months back, we have established an environment research and development center in Bangladesh University. Earlier, I remember with, with much profound respect that the founder of this university, late Kaji Ajahar Ali, he introduced environmental science 
education program in the university. But due to lack of certain faci facilities and also due to his sad demise, we could not initiate the program. The management as well as the administration have now taken this program seriously. And And in fact, this program, the US visit of the US team has come into its effect with the, uh, uh, um, um, by the initiative of the president of this university, Mr. Kaji Jamil Ajahar. He contacted the relevant organizations in USA as well as these two professors who are with us and has taken an attempt that to develop this center, environmental research and development center as a center of excellence for the whole country. I hope and believe that this program will be successful and the and the desire and the ambition of, of our management as well as the administration will be successful in the long, in near future. All of us know that environmental issues are now a global concern. Irrespective of developed and developing countries, all the countries are facing environmental problems. Tsunami, cedar, then earthquakes, tidal wars, cyclones, flood, industrial pollution and many other natural issues the world people has to face each year. Among the develop again among all the countries, developing countries are more affected and among the developing countries, again, Bangladesh is the worst victim. We have natural environmental issues. We have, I have named a number of them. We are facing all of them almost every year. Besides, now and then, earthquake is shaking Dhaka, as well as other cities. So we are in a most vulnerable position as regards to environmental issues. In the backdrop of this context, this uh, visit of these two professors from USA and about a week long programs on different aspects of environmental issues have been organized by the administration and the management. First, I'd like to congratulate and thanks our president who has taken this initiative and has given lots of efforts to make this program a success. Similarly, I think Mr. Shihab Ajahar, the member of the Board of Trustee and coordinator of this US Teams program, has taken lots of efforts, has given lots of energy to make this program successful. On behalf of the university, I'd like to thank him also. Today, 
I consider it's a red letter day for Bangladesh University. We started this program from 11 o'clock, today's program, today's seminar, and before me, nine people has spoken or presented or deli um, their deliberations or papers, useful papers. In the morning hour, we listen to Jubaida Gulshanara on Charon Bill slums or issues, problems, and how the environment is affecting this built-in environment. She has, she, through her research, she has presented a nice paper. I would like to congratulate her. Then I think everybody of us have, have listened to the wonderful presentation of Mr. Iqbal Habib. I think all of us can congratulate him and we have learned a great deal from him. Then we listen to Dr. Louis Onslem, Professor of 